Alright, I wanted to make a, it's a really basic, easy uh, face replacement tutorial. My friends, they're always at, you know, asking me how I put people's faces in pictures and stuff. And actually, it's, it's really, really easy. I mean, you, the more work you put into it, the better it looks. But this is just going to be a really easy uh, picture. I want to take my friend's face and put on this kid playing the guitar. There's Stanley there. I'm cutting his face out and putting it on there. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. File. Open. And I took the two pictures I'm going to use and I threw in a folder just so they're easier to find. Take the picture of the kid. And file. Open. Picture of Stanley. Now I'm going to zoom in. That's probably good enough. Now you can use different tools to cut out your selection, or well, to make your selection, but I like the polygonal lasso tool. That's what I like using. So I'm just going to click and make the selection here. Now when you get down to like round areas or curves, uh, this makes smaller selections. And it kind of like hides the fact that you're cutting in and out with straight lines. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect. Come up here. Just go I mean if you're new to Photoshop, you just gotta go out of the screen a little bit to move the picture. When you get up here take some of the hair and then back down here I'm cutting the hair out along the side of his face. And I'm gonna pick it up the hair again on the sideburn. All right. Let's make sure you leave some of the forehead with some of the hair up here. Now I'm uh, going to. Well, he's got his pictures going on a kid, so you know I'm gonna get rid of his uh Scooby Doo shaggy beard here. So I'm gonna take the clone stamping tool. Oh, you gotta click the background over here because it's locked. Just double left click it and then hit OK. Now when you want to use the clone stamp, especially on a face, you want to use, you want to sample from as close to the area you're trying to cover up as you can so the skin tones look as real as possible. Okay, you just take your brush after you got your clone stamp selected and wherever you're gonna sample at and just hit Alt and left click and then there you go now you can take all click here all click or you could like take us from a sample like to say from here move it over and just left click and drag just whatever is looking best for you Now I'm going to take from my area, it's a little bit darker. Because this is the underneath of the, start, starting of the underneath of the chin, so kind of, and this, don't be too worried about getting this looking perfect because the way I do this, you're going to erase some of this anyway, so let's get it close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get little spots there. And then when you get to an area where, see how it sticks out a little bit, you can pick your smudge tool. Just grab it. Just, just barely move it. Just smudge it a little bit so that it doesn't stick out as much but like I say we're gonna take care of most of the off color here to after we put the picture on so now we'll go back to my clone stamp and I want to get rid of this hair up here so same thing closest that I can get to what I'm trying to cover up and like I said the same with the chin hair it doesn't need to be perfect 
that's good enough just as long as it doesn't stick out as being hair okay now you want to hit control and C as in cat to copy that or to cut then go back to your family picture and hit control V as in Victor to paste it now first thing I want to do is go to edit transform flip horizontal then I want to go to edit free transform I mean you could zoom in and do this all in one step but I do it in two steps just okay now when you click on the corner here before you click on it push down shift what that does is it you, it adjusts the size horizontally and vertically at the same time see so it is so you don't have a real fat face or a real skinny face let's get it close then let off of left click before you let off shift because sometimes it'll jump and distort it a little bit so I just get it close and then I have to hit one of the buttons on the side here to apply it because I cannot use any other tool until I apply that now I zoom in go up to edit again edit free transform shift left click let's get it close see now I can what I always like try to do is line up the eyes as much as I can I think that might look pretty good there. See, at, when you use free, free transform, you always have to hit something to, and then apply it before you can do anything else. Let me zoom out here and see how that looks. All right, that's gonna look good enough. Now I'm gonna zoom back in. All right, so now we got our face on there. I wanna get, make sure that you're still on layer one, which is the face. Go to image, adjustments, hue and saturation now this picture doesn't have oh, too much uh, colored I mean the saturation is a little down so I'm going to turn down the saturation see how he's starting to blend a little bit with the picture I'm going to hit OK I'm going to go to image adjustment brightness and contrast now I'm going to turn the brightness down now his skin tone is pretty close so I'm going to hit OK. Now, I want to use the eraser tool and I want my flow to be 3%. That's good enough there. Alright, now, now around the chin here, see how it's a little bit lighter? I'm just going to rub that out. What we're actually doing, you know, along this chin line here where it's a little darker just rub rub along the outside of the, the face you put on there see what you're actually doing is you're um, this making the outside of it the outside lines here transparent so it actually blends in with the picture behind it more and it actually turns out looking pretty good all the way around there. Just blend. Use the eraser tool to blend it. Uh, right. Let me see how that looks. Well, I think I'm gonna see if I can move his face up a little bit. Now, if you want to move the face. The easiest way, I, the way I like to do it is I like to click the top arrow here and then use my arrow keyboards because it's, you can left click and drag it with the mouse, but it just seems like it's uh, more controlled from the arrow keys. There, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to try to darken his face up just a little bit more. There we go. Maybe a little touch up of the eraser tool around the neck here around the side of the face and I think I'm gonna 
image adjustment hue and saturation see this is controlling the master saturation that's all colors you can go j just the reds because he's got some rosy cheeks here so I'm going to take some of the red out of it there we go that looks better to me then if you actually I messed up because the side of his face is sticking out over here so there we go all right now there's a little bit of this color you know difference in color here I mean if that you know the, the more time you put into it the better it's gonna turn out of course you could take the smudge tool and it's like let's blend it in a little bit better like it I got mine set on 50 but that's just where it was at from before all right now for the teeth and when you change colors and everything your teeth are gonna become an off-white this like you cut out the face just take a selection of his teeth it doesn't matter and got image adjustment brightness and contrast turn the brightness up and hit OK then you can also go in here and adjustments hue and saturation turn the saturation down don't go overboard with this because if you go too far you'll start giving it a blue tint I don't know why it gives it a blue tint but it does so there's my picture of Stanley's face on the fat kid playing guitar. Alright, hope this helps.